Lesson 28. What did Jesus say about morality? Well, quite a lot. And it's condensed in this 18-minute message that we call the Sermon on the Mount. Now, I'm sure originally it was much longer than that, but these are the notes that we got from Matthew, 18 minutes that changed the world. This is not just the most famous speech of Jesus. It is the most famous speech ever given in humanity. And part of the reason is that five different times Jesus changed all of ethics, all of morality, all of religion, five times in one 18-minute message. But put that in perspective, Albert Einstein, as smart as he was, did it once in his lifetime. By taking this incredible thought of the theory of relativity and putting it on a bumper sticker, E equals MC squared, we have five moral bumper stickers from Jesus, and they change everything about religion, each one of them alone. Let me, let me just plow through the five so you kind of get a, a gist of the genius of this one sermon. N number one is a reversal of values. The Beatitudes, which run from chapter 5, verse 3 through verse 10, uh, they're, they're all surprisingly reversal of values. Blessed are the poor in spirit, not the rich, the poor, blessed are they, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, you wouldn't have guessed that. Blessed are the meek, you wouldn't have guessed that. But the last one, blessed are the persecuted, is the only one that Jesus commented upon. And when he did, he changed it from third person, those people, blessed are those people, to blessed are you. When you are reviled and persecuted and insulted because of, and this is important, because of me, Jesus says. Elsewhere in Jewish literature, you can find that the persecuted, like martyrs, are honored because they stood fast for the word of God. It's the Torah that they died for. Go to the end of the Sermon on the Mount, and you find Jesus placing himself in the place of the Torah again. Not just blessed are you when you're persecuted, but blessed are you when you build your house upon my words. It's a rock. And the rains came down, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Jesus begins the sermon and ends the sermon with the declaration that he is the Torah, firm enough for you to build your life upon. So now religion is not about some inscription in a book or on a stone. It's about a person that you follow. Wow, what a difference. The second change that Jesus made, that changed all of religion, is moving morality from behavior to motives. No longer is it sufficient to not kill someone, but you have to not have hate in your heart. Because you can not kill someone with an ax, but slay them on social media. Or again, it's not enough just to not commit adultery. You have to remove lust from your heart. Because you can, you can not sleep with a woman, but still undress her with your eyes. It's not enough to not break an oath. You have, to, you have to have honesty on your tongue at all times. And on it goes. Jesus kept turning morality from your behavior to your motives. Because if you deal with the behavior but not with the motives, people will find alternative ways of harming other human beings. Third, love your enemies. <laughs> Nothing like that had ever been said in the Middle East. To love your enemy doesn't mean just to have warm feelings towards them. It means to provide what they need, food, clothing, clothing shelter, housing. And you could, be, you could be doing that for an enemy that could hurt your family. I know it's dangerous. It sounds foolish, but the reality is when Christians in the book of Acts began doing that, they broke down the walls of hostility and there was actually less bloodshed. There was less triage because you turned enemies into friends by sacrificially loving them. It's a lesson we still need to learn. Number four, God is Father. In the Lord's Prayer, chapter, nine, chapter 6, verse 9, it says, our Father, which art in heaven. Nobody prayed like that. Nobody. Only Jesus introduced this concept of addressing God as a loving Father, not as a distant Lord. And in this sermon alone, he uses the word Father 17 times. That's more than any other word other than and and the. 
It is the most common word of the Sermon on the Mount. Why? Because when you understand God is your Father, that changes all of ethics and all of 